Huh. A glass bell. I wonder what will happen if... I'm dizzy. Our esteemed Bishop Mandible cuts quite a figure, doesn't he? I don't doubt the Crucible's getting tired of bowing and scraping to him. Why would the clerics want a scrying sphere anyway? I thought they didn't believe in the future. Yeah, your guess is as lucid as mine, Flute. But Crucible appears to think that they're up to no good again. Then why would he do business with them at all? Let alone sell them a sphere. Well, you know, Crucible, he'd sell his own mother's spectacles if he thought there was a profit in it. And the clerics are paying off in cash. Which should keep us in the clear for years to come. That side is even sharper than a weaver's spindle. Still, I'm certainly pleased that Crucible's not taking any chances. This scythe might become very useful if our friend the bishop has been less than transparent with us. Ouch! Yes, very useful indeed. He's back! <laughs> so are we. It might help to point at something first. It's the dragon! Oh, Well, that worked. Funny, I don't feel very scary. Get away from here! Now I've got to go and round them all up again. And you'd better not be here when I get back. Go on now.
Hello there. Who said that? I did. My name is Fleece, first chosen of the Guild of Shepherds. I wish we had time to chat a while and trade some tales, but we have got a serious problem on our hands. What sort of trouble are you having? It seems we've a dragon nearby who has an enormous appetite for fresh mutton. We breed our sheep for extra whiteness, so we cannot keep them on the meadows. She can spot them miles away. By now, the dragon has carried off so many that we may not be able to fill the cleric's order. The clerics? I just saw the bishop at the glassmaker's. Bishop Mandible? He placed the order for 10,000 sheep. 10,000 sheep? That's enough to feed an army. Yes, that had occurred to us too. You noticed our increased patrol in the forest. We'll deliver the sheep to the clerics if we can, but we won't trust them. I suppose fighting the dragon will be out of the question. Only a mage can save us. I see you've noticed my little friend. She doesn't look at all well. She isn't, and my songs of healing don't seem to be bringing her much comfort. I wish I were better with him. The flock is out to pasture. You'll find them there. Go forth, wizard, and may you return safely to our fold. Police was right. They really are easy to spot. Well, what have we here? Oh, that's what comes of being in such a blazing hurry, I guess. I thought you looked a bit scrawny. Oh, why, you'd hardly make a decent kindling. Oh, that's uh, quite a bit of gold you have there. That? Oh, that's nothing compared to what it used to be. Piled floor to ceiling it was. Everyone said it was the most beautiful lair anywhere, and right they were, too. Then one day, last spring it was, comes along this third-rate wizard who botched up everything. He tried to get the volcano to blow, but only shook up the place in a huge earthquake instead. <laughs> Broke all my fancy glass, mind you, and made off with most of the gold, too. The only thing he left me was a gorgeous glass ball. Gold again. What useless stuff. Uh, put it back the way you found it. Now. Now that looks a lot more comfortable.
York Slav. Have you no manners, lad? Stop staring at me. Oh, was I staring? <laughs> so sorry. Oh, don't mind me, love. I'll get rather crotchety on an empty stomach. D does that mean you're going to incinerate me, then? Incinerate you? Oh, my, aren't you the foxy one? <laughs> I haven't created any fire since my last mating season, <laughs> and you don't want to know how many centuries ago that was. <laughs> no, 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 that's much too much heat for me these days. You mean you can't breathe fire? Can't. Let's just say I won't. Just between you and me, love, the stuff gives me the eebie-jeebies. <laughs> Sheep. Gold. Sheep. I guess that draft isn't going to help me. Cheeky brat!